Hello from snowy Maine. I um this one's gonna be a short video. Uh but I was watching the Pauline Paradox again from 119 Ministries. Um uh, and I, when I go through a video or something written and I do a rebuttal, I go section by section. I actually don't watch the whole thing first and then rebuttal it. I just pause it and you know when I see something that I want to talk about. So they had brought up Ezekiel 36, 26, and 27. Um, and because they're talking about how um, God knows our heart and he wants to put a, a new heart of flesh in us, which is absolutely true. But I found this interesting, and this is minor, but um, in the whole discussion, Wow, it sounded like a car was sliding all over the place out there. Distracted. Um, but for this discussion, I think it's, you know, it's worth mentioning. I don't want to nitpick, but I find this interesting. Um, so they read uh, Ezekiel 36, 26, and 27. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from your heart of stone, from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And I'll put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. What I find interesting about this um, is the Torah movement's love of the word Torah. Torah, I mean, they love saying it. It's like Hebrew, so I mean, they got they love it. You know, it's just like it reminds me honestly, of Muslims that I debate um, who worship the Arabic language. It, it, anyway, that aside, I tend to ramble, and that's okay. I'm me. Um, but they love the word Torah, Torah. You know, we're Torah observers. You know, we're, oh, we love the Torah. We're growing in Torah. And what I find interesting about this passage in Ezekiel 36, is when you look at verse 27, they've quoted as, keep my laws, which um, I want to point out that the Hebrew in Ezekiel 36, 27, actually does not have the um, Hebrew for Torah in the verse. Um, so they're trying to insert that where it's not actually there in the Hebrew. Uh, because if you look at the verse, you have um, statutes, and you have a Hebrew word for statutes. Um, I can't pronounce these because I'm not Hebrew speaking. Um, you have statutes, and that's not the Hebrew word for Torah. And you have um, Judgments, and that's also not the Hebrew word for Torah, so it's not actually in there, um, which I find hilarious because this chapter, I mean, these verses are talking about the new covenant um, when God brings a new covenant, and so I would argue that no, um, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's the Torah that there that is spoken about in this verse. You have the one word in Hebrew in that verse for statutes, um, the meaning of that is, uh, the word is C-H-O-Q, um, something prescribed or owned a statute. And then in the other um, part of the verse, the Hebrew word for judgments um, is M-I-S-H-P-A-T, and it's, uh, the meaning is judgment or justice. Um, it, it, it actually, in the, just the long description in the Hebrew itself, I can't see anywhere I'm looking through right now where it says law. So neither one of those words in that verse is actually the word Torah that you could insert the word law there. Um, because not all God's instructions are the Torah laws. Um, there's other laws that are not Torah laws. We have instructions in the New Testament that are not Torah laws. Um, so 
you know, it's little, but it's significant enough to mention because, you know, you gotta be careful of their trickery if you're not paying attention. Um, and, you know, again, it's little, but I do think it's worth noting. I'm gonna continue watching and um, I will talk to you soon. I'm gonna go watch some more. So we'll see you probably in a little bit. All right, bye.